Good evening, everyone. This is RJL518. My name is Robert, welcoming you to another edition of Inside Pitch. The 1976 season is on the air. Today's date is June 21st of that year, 1976. And we are at San Diego Stadium for a big California showdown between the San Francisco Giants and the San Diego Padres. The Giants come into this game at 36 and 31. They are a ways behind the Reds, but they are in second place in the NL West. The Padres at 29 and 34. They are in fourth place in the NL West. However, they only tra they only trail the Dodgers by two wins. So anything is possible here at this time. Philip Reynolds is first to join us at San Diego Stadium. So make sure everybody gets their food and drink for the night. We should have a good game for you tonight. The Padres historically won this game 6-3. to three. There were 22 hits and two errors combined. Let's see what happens in tonight's game. Starting pitcher for the San Diego Padres will be Dave Freislebin. 10 wins, 13 losses, a save, a 3-5-1 ERA. And Philip Reynolds says, when are we going to see some ice? When I feel comfortable to play the game, I shall certainly do it. So Freislebin definitely will be the starting pitcher. And let's see what the Giants have for him. Top of the first, leading off for the G-Men. Center fielder Larry Herndon, 288 average, two homers, 23 RBIs. Brown, yellow, and white dice for the Padres since they are the home team. Let's get started for inside pitch, the most exciting tabletop baseball game on earth. That's my opinion, of course. Freislebin will pitch, 6-4. That's a walk plus 10. And that is going to walk Herndon. That is a walk. San Diego Stadium subtracts three from strikeouts and one from walks. Not many homers hit that year. So Herndon gets a leadoff walk. Next batter for the Giants, second baseman Marty Perez, 257 average, three homers, 32 RBIs. Infield will be halfway. Let's see if anything happening on the bases. A 17 says a no. Freislebin will go ahead and pitch. Four, six, that's a home run, question mark. Perez, a righty, a 1-18, to 18, that 13 passes. Now against a righty for Perez, he needs a 2. So a 2 or lower, Perez hits this out. No, too high on a 14. But he does get to swing. And that is a 5-2, and he pops out to second base. So he goes from a home run chance to a pop fly. And that is the first out. Here is the left fielder, Gary Matthews. 279 average, 20 homers, 84 RBIs. Anything happening on the bases? A six. Uh, hit and run is available, but burned in with a stolen base rating of 11. I'm not going to do it here. And Freislebin will pitch to Matthews. And that is a 4-6 again, a home run with a question mark. Matthews a righty, a 1-18, to the four passes. This time, Matthews, however, has a 20 against a righty. I do not even have to roll the D20. Kaboom! That ball is high. That ball is hit deep to center field, and that is gone. Home run, Gary Matthews. A two-run jack by Matthews as Freislebin throws two fat pitches. Perez couldn't do anything with it, but Matthews certainly could. And just like that, the Giants are out to a 2-0 lead here in the first. Next batter up for the Giants will be right fielder Bobby Mercer. 259 average, 23 homers, 90 RBIs. Freislebin. We will pitch, and that is a 6-5. That's a range play. Mercer will swing, 2-2, two -two. against a righty. That's a ground ball to second base. Tito Fuentes is there. His range is a three. He will make the play and throw to first for out number two. Nice play by Fuentes. 
Next up for the Giants is first baseman Daryl Evans. 205 average, 11 homers, 46 RBIs. Two outs. Pitch from Freisleben. 6-1. That's a blank. He's not tired. Evans will swing 5-2. He flies out to right, and that will end the inning. Two runs on one hit. A home run by Gary Matthews, a two-run jack. And the G-Men take an early lead here going into the bottom of the first. Starting pitcher for the San Francisco Giants, John Montefusco. 16 wins, 14 losses, a 284 ERA. I always thought Montefusco was a little bit underrated. This guy could actually pitch pretty well. With a 284 ERA, only a handful of pitchers that year that had ERAs under three. Montefusco was obviously one of them. Bottom of the first, leading off for the Padres. Left fielder Johnny Grubb, 284 average, five homers, 27 RBIs in 76. Montefusco will pitch, 1-4, that's at the park. San Diego Stadium, 5-5, five, five, and he grounds it at the plate. And that'll be taken care of by Hill. And that's out number one. On a ground out to the catcher. Next up, second baseman Tito Fuentes. 263 average, two homers, 36 RBIs. Montefusco with the pitch, 2-2. Two, two. That's a strikeout. That 10 is too high. Fuentes will swing, 5-1. That's a single to center. A nice base hit for Fuentes to get the Padres a man on. Center fielder Willie Davis is next, 268 average, five homers, 46 RBIs. The infield does move to halfway. Anything on the strat? No. Montefusco will pitch to Davis. And that's a 3-6 strikeout for no, too high. San Diego Stadium helps out Davis on that one. Davis hits a 5-4, and against a righty, that's going to be a base hit past first. Fuentes' base winning rating is a 3. He will make third on the single. And Davis holds it first. Two consecutive hits by the Friars. And that will bring up first baseman Willie McCovey, Hall of Famer. 204 average, seven homers, 36 RBIs. Of course, McCovey did not have a good season that year. The infield is going to play. They don't much have much of a chance. They're going to play halfway here. See if they can get a double play, although it's not easy to double play McCovey. We'll see if anything happening on the bases. That is a six. And, hmm, no steal, but a hit and run is available. Davis has good speed to steal second, even with the minus two on hit and run. But McCovey does strike out. I'm going to call that off and let Montefusco pitch. 5-1, range play at the park. San Diego Stadium says 5-4. That is a star four. It's a ground ball to short. Now that ball is hit to that ball is hit to Hector Torres. His range is a three, but with the infield halfway, it's a two. He will not get it. That's going to be a single pass short. Fuentes will come in to score. Davis with a base running rating of four. He will have to hold it second. He will not make third, but the Padres get a run back on a base hit by McCovey. And it is now two to one. Runners at first and second. Next up is the right fielder, Dave Winfield, another Hall of Famer. 283 average, 13 homers, 69 RBIs. The infield is still staying in at halfway. We'll see if anything happening on the bases. The 16 says no. Montefusco will go ahead and pitch. And that's a 6-3. Again, a range play. Winfield will swing 3-4. That's a base hit to third. That's a single to third. The ball is hit to Ken Reitz. His range is a three, but of course, with the infield halfway, it's a two. 
No, he won't make it. That's going to be a single past third. That's going to be a single pass third. Willie Davis' base running rating is a four, and he will score from second. So the Padres tied the game up. McCovey's base running rating is a one. He has no chance to get the third. He will stay where he's at. And just like that, a home run by the Giants in the top of the first. The Padres get two runs in the bottom of the first, and that is the fourth straight hit by the Friars. Next up is Ted Kubiak. He is at third base for this game tonight. 236 average, no homers, 26 RBIs. Right now, the Giants are having problems getting outs. Dave Little joins us here at San Diego Stadium. Let's see if anything happening on the bases. A 16, no. Montefusco will pitch. And that's a 5-2. That's a blank. Kubiak will swing 2-2, two, two, and he grounds it to third. Let's see where this is at. And that is going to be hit in the hole. So a double play chance will go from second to third. So let's see what he does. 2-0-3. Second base for the Giants is Perez. He has a zero arm. A 1-3. to three. They turn the double play. No, they do not. McCovey will make it to third. Winfield is thrown out at second, but Kubiak beats the throw, and there are two outs. Two outs now. Next batter will be Hector Torres for the Padres. He is at shortstop for this game. Torres is a Torres 195 average, four homers, 15 RBIs. And there are two outs. Runners at first and third. Let's see if anything happening on the strat. That is a three. Nothing happening. Montefusco will pitch to Torres. The infield is back. Montefusco, 1-5, strikeout, 10, no. Torres will swing, 5-4, and he grounds at the second base. Perez will get that one. He will throw to first, and that will end the inning. Two runs for the Padres on four hits. And after one, we got a 2-2 tie. Twos across the board on the scoreboard. Top of the second. Leading off for the Giants will be their shortstop, Chris Spire. 226 average, three homers, 40 RBIs. Freislebin will go ahead and pitch. That's a 2-1. Strikeout two. Yes, he will get him. Struck him out. Strikeout number one for Freislebin. He had 81 of them in uh, 76. Next up for the Giants, third baseman Ken Reitz, 267 average, five homers, 66 RBIs. Freislebin will pitch, 4-6, home run, question mark. Reitz a righty, a 1-18, the seven passes. Against a right-hander, Reitz needs a four or lower. No, it's a six, too high, but Reitz will swing. 1-4, and he gets a base at the center. A single for Reitz. So he doesn't get the homer, but he does get the hill. He does get the hit. Infield moves to halfway. Here's the catcher, Mark Hill. 183 average, three homers, 15 RBIs. Anything happening on the bases? An eight says no. Freislebin will go ahead and pitch. And that is a 6-2. Strikeout five. Yes, gets Hill. Struck him out, and that is strikeout number two for Freislebin, and there are two down. Here's the pitcher, John Montefusco, 103 average as a hitter that year. Anything happening on the bases? No. With two outs, Montefusco will swing away. Freislebin, 3-4, and that's a double question mark. 
John Montefusco's a righty. A 1-13 to is a single right past the pitcher. That's a 12. Montefusco does get a base hit. He will get a single. Reads with a base running rating of 1. Not a It becomes a 2 with 2 outs. Not a chance to get to 3rd. He has to stay where he's at. We'll go to 2nd. That keeps the inning alive for the Giants. And the batter now will be Larry Herndon. Herndon 0 for 0. He walked his first time up. Anything on the bases? No. Friesleben will go ahead and pitch. 5-6. And against a righty, that's an automatic out. It'll be a star two, a ground out to short, inning over. No runs for the Giants on a couple of hits. We go to the bottom of the second. Leading off for the Friars will be the catcher, Fred Kendall. 246 average, two homers, 39 RBIs. Kendall gets the call here. Montefusco will pitch, and that's a 6-3. Range play. Kendall will swing. 1-3, that's a fly ball to left field going to Matthews. His range is a 1. Nope. Is that going to be a single or a double? That's going to be a single for Kendall as he hits that way out of Matthews' reach. A base hit for Kendall. Infield's going to bring in the corners. And here comes the pitcher, Dave Freislebin. He bats 189 as a hitter. Not bad, but I'm going to call for a bunt. But let's see what the strat rule has to say. That is a 15. The bunt does come on, so we will see a bunt by Dave Freislebin to try to move Kendall over. Montefusco does get to pitch, and that is a 2-5. That is a strikeout, but that's halved. So Freislebin, 17, minus 3 becomes 14, divided by 2 is a 7. That is a 9. There will not be a strikeout. So Freislebin gets the bunt. His bunt rating is a 3, and that is bunted to the pit right back to Montefusco. And that is an 18, and on that, on that, that's going to be bunted too hard. It could be a double play by Freislebin. It could be a double play, so it's bunted right back to Montefusco, but too hard. But zero, zero. No, there is no pivot. There is no pivot, so... There is no pivot, so there's no chance for a double play. Question is, question is, where does it go? So Fred Kendall's base running rating is a one. I think he's going to automatically bout. The only way Kendall gets to second is on a six. And he got it. Holy cow, we made it. Bunted too hard, but not bunted. But for some reason, Kendall gets a great jump. He will still make it to second, and Freislebin is out, as the only play was to first anyway. That's how you do that. So Kendall goes to first. Steeler fan joins us here at San Diego Stadium. Now one out, and here's Johnny Grubb. That does go as a sacrifice hit to the pitcher. Now Grub the batter. Grub is 0 for 1. See if anything happening on the bases. 15 says a no. Montefusco will pitch. And that's a 3-3. Wild pitch. That is a 3. Yes, that's a wild pitch. Kendall will go to third. So Montefusco actually has a little bit of a problem there. And he does pick up a wild pitch. And now a run moves into 90 feet away. Now the infield, the infield is still going to play halfway because Kendall with a base running rating of zero with, one, with the infield halfway has no chance to get in. But we'll see what happens here. Montefusco, let's see, strat roll, 15, no. Montefusco will pitch to Grubb. That's a 2-6. That's a walk. That nine is a good. And Grubb will go to first on a base on ball. So, so far, the pitchers are having some issues in this one. 
Here's Fuentes. Fuentes is one for one. He singled his first time up. Now a halfway play makes different makes a sense. Anything on the bases? A nine? No. Montefusco will go ahead and pitch to Fuentes. And that's a 3-3. Again, a wild pitch. And that, again, is a 4. That goes to the backstop. That will score Kendall. Stadium cheers. EA. Two wild pitches by Montefusco. And he only has a 1-4 to four chance to do it. And he gets a 4 twice. And the Padres have taken a 3-2 lead. So now Fuentes will bat with a man on second. I'll re-roll the bases run and nothing happening there. Montefusco can't believe it. He has no control at the moment. Pitch going to Fuentes. That's a 4-3. That's at the park. San Diego Stadium says 2-6. Fly out the right. Grubb's base running rating is a two. A fly ball to right field, subtract one, that's a one. And the right fielder for the for the Giants is Mercer as a zero. The only way Grubb can make third is on a one, and that is a five. He stays right where he's at, two outs. Here's Willie Davis. Davis is one for one, singled his first time up. Nothing on the bases. Montefusco will go ahead and pitch, and that's a 6-6. Six, six. Error on a grounder. Davis will swing. 2-2 two, two. against the righty. That's a fly out the left, and of course, there's no error there, and the inning will end. One run for the Padres on one hit, and two wild pitches on Montefusco which is probably much the reason why they came in. After two, three to two Padres. We have the third inning coming up. And here is Marty Perez for the G-Men. Perez is 0 for 1. Freislebin will pitch. 2-1, strikeout, 7, no. Perez will swing away. That's a 2-2. Two, two. He flies out the left. And that is the first out. The Padres historically won this game 6-3. Here's Gary Matthews. Matthews hit a home run his last time up. He's one for one, a two-run jack, which put the Giants up a quick 2-0. But the Friars come right in. Baseball Demos joins us here at San Diego Stadium. Check out that absolutely awesome, terrific, unbelievably fantastic channel. Friesleben will pitch. Nothing. I don't know why I'm rolling a strat. I'll re-roll that. 6-3. Strikeout. 18. No. Matthews will swing. 1-4. Star 2. That's a ground out short. And there are two down. And now here is Bobby Mercer. Mercer is 0 for 1. Fries I don't want to be annoying, but as I recall the pitcher's name, Frieslebin. Well, I was told Frieslebin. Frieslebin. I don't know. Unfortunately, I can't ask the guy to see how he pronounced his last name. I don't know. The guy, the guy with the last name of F-R-E-I-S-L-E-B-E-N makes a pitch. 2-1, and that's a strikeout. 17 is too high. Mercer will swing. 1-6, star 2, ground out to short. And a 1-2-3 inning for Dave Freislevin. 1-2-3, go the G-men. We go to the bottom of the third. Just call them Laban, right? I know, right? Bottom of the third. And here is Willie McCovey. McCovey is one for one, has a single. Montefusco will pitch. One, three, that's a blank. He's not tired. McCovey, two, one, fly out to center. And that is out number one. And next up is Dave Winfield. He's one for one with a single. Montefusco, one, one, that's blank. Montefusco, 
Winfield swings 3-2. He flies out the right. Two outs. And now the batter is Kubiak. Kubiak is 0 for 1. Grounded to a fielder's choice. Montefusco, 5-5. Five, five. Possible error. Kubiak will swing 2-1. Line drive right to the right to second base. There's nobody on base, so there's no error on a line out when there is nobody on base. The only error there, of course, is if there was a chance on a double play. So there's no error, and that is the side retires. That's just a line out to second. So the Padres go one, two, three. First time both pitchers do that. And after three, three to two in favor of the Friars. Looking like Daves of Our Lives in here. Yes, it is. I took a closer look at that card, that uh, messed up card there, uh, Dave. You look at it, you already know it's a pitcher that was placed on a batter's card template. That's why it looks like that. Make sure, just email Chris a picture of that. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to either send you a PDF or a printed or a printed card. He's done that for me too. I would I would recommend a printed card since it's off a printed set. And he and he'll send one to you. He'll send one. He's done that. And all the seasons I got from him, he had a few mistakes. He fixed them all. There were some other mistakes I saw too, but I didn't mention it because I didn't think it was necessary. <sighs> Top of the fourth inning, Daryl Evans leads off for the G-Men. Evans is 0 for 1. Top of the fourth, Fleislebin will pitch. 4-3, strikeout, 16, no. Evans swings, 5-6, fly out the right. Looks like the pitching has settled down a little bit in this game. And here is Chris Spire. Spire 0 for 1. Frislebin, 3-1 against a righty. That's a walk chance. That six will walk him. Spire trots down to first on a walk. And that is the second walk issued by Frislebin. He had 59 of them in 76. And here's Ken Reitz. Reitz singled his first time up. He's one for one. The infield moves into halfway. Anything on the bases, a 15, no. Frazier been ready to pitch. 6-2, strikeout, 8, no. Reeds, 2-6. Ground ball right back to Frazier Ben. Let's see if they get the double play. Probably will on a ground of the pitcher. 3-0-4-5. Reeds is hitting from the right side, so that means the second baseman is pivot, which is which is Fuentes, and he has a zero. So a one to five, they turn the double play. Not a problem, they do inning over. A G1, a G143 double play, and that retires the G-Men. As he grounded it right back to Frazlebin. Nothing across except the walk. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Here's Hector Torres. Torres is 0 for 1. Yes, I know. We did mention I We did. Jeff Merklin joins us here at San Diego Stadium. Good to have you here, sir. I think it's the first time you join me in a chat. Welcome. And yes, we did know that Reitz did pass away last week. And yeah, he was not too bad a player. I totally agree. Montefusco, 5-5. Five, five. That's a possible error. Torres will swing 2-2, two, two, and that's a base hit to left field. That ball is hit to Matthews. His error rating is a 5, and that's a 6. He won't make an error, so that's just going to be an ordinary single. And Torres gets, will hold it first. And the next batter will be Fred Kendall. Kendall got a singles last time up. He's one for one. Infield is halfway. 17, nothing on the bases. Montefusco, 1-4. That's at the park. San Diego Stadium, 4-4. Four, four, fly out the left. And that is out number one. He again, oh, By the way, Dave, he, uh, Chris updated the uh, charts again for the beta chart. So please make sure you download it if you're trying it out. 
He's now made a he's now made a new rule that states on well, I'll get to that later. Fres Dave Fresleben's the next batter, and he let's see. I'm gonna have him try a bunt again. I'm gonna try a bunt again. But first we gotta see if anything happening on the on the main on the main die. No. So Fresleben's gonna punt punt to try to move Hector Torres over. Although Fresleben actually could hit the ball, but he's gonna try to bunt. Montefusco, the corners are the infield is still halfway. Five five. That's a possible error. That reading is accepted. Now let's see if Fresno Ben can make the bunt. And his bunt rating is a three. And that is bunted again back to the pitcher. So it's bunted to Montefusco. His range is a 14. And that is going to be the lead runner thrown out. Hitter safe at first. However, Mont however, there was an error chance on that play. We now roll to see Montefusco has an error rating of 13, and he will not make the error. So he turns around, throws to second to get Torres, and Freisleben takes over at first, and there are two outs. So no error on the play and not a good bunt. As the lead runner is thrown out and the hitter is safe at first. So Fresleben hit it again too hard and Montefusco did not make an error. So Fresleben holds it first and that just goes as a fielder's choice. The batter now is Johnny Grubb. Grubb is 0 for 1. He walked his last time up. I don't think anything happening on the play. No. Montefusco will pitch. 6-6, six, six, error on a grounder. Grubb will swing. 2-3, that is a ground ball to second base. Is it to Perez? His error rating is a 6. That's a 10. He won't make an error. He will throw to first to get Grubb, and that will do it. Lots of error chances today, but not meant no sticking. Only one hit for the Padres. Still 3-2 to two after 4. Inning number five. Mark Hill will go ahead and lead off for the G-Men. He is 0 for 1. Fraser Ben can pitch to 28 batters. So I'll go ahead and mention that. He can pitch to here. And Montefusco can pitch to 29, which is here. Fraser Ben will pack. Will pitch, and that is Sua Dice reroll. 6-6. Six, six, wild pitch. Ball one. Two, three, blank. Hill will go ahead and swing. Five, two, he lines out to first. And that is the first out. Here's John Montefusco. He will bat. Freisleben will swing, will pitch. Three, five, that's a walk. That 16 is way too high. Montefusco, can he get a hit? Five, five, no, he just strikes out. And that is strikeout number three for Freislebin, two outs. Two down, and now Larry Herndon. Herndon is 0 for 1, but he did walk. Freislebin will pitch. 1-5, strikeout 15, nope. Herndon, 2-1, ground out to first, inning over. So definitely the pitchers really have, have settled down here since the first inning. That's another three-up, three-down inning on the Giants. Halfway through the game, three to two Padres. Bottom of the fifth. And here is Tito Fuentes. He is one for two. Montefusco will pitch. And one six range play. Fuentes will swing, 3-6. That's a ball hit to center field. That is a 14. Against a righty, that's a double, but it's a ball hit to center field, and that is Herndon. Herndon's range is a 3. If he makes it, he'll take a double away from Fuentes. Yes, he will. One out. What a play by Larry Herndon in center. Takes away a double from Fuentes.
Next up will be Willie Davis. Davis is one for two. Montefusco will pitch. Two, four. That's a blank. Davis will swing. One, five. He flies out to right. Two men down. Here comes this guy, Willie McCovey. One for two. He has a single in the game. Even in 1970, even in 1976, as McCovey was getting up there in years, he was still a heck of a first baseman. A four range and a four error. That's pretty darn good. Montefusco will pitch. Three, four. That's a blank. McCovey will swing two, five, and he flies out the right as well, although was hitting that year not too good. Another one, two, three inning on the Padres, still three to two after five. In a good matchup here in the National League West. We go to the sixth inning. The Giants are in second place in the division. The Padres are fourth. But remember, we're only in June. There's still lots of baseball and 10-minute ticker to be done before we think about playoff positioning here. Top of the sixth. And here's Marty Perez for the Giants. He is 0 for 2. Fries LeBen will pitch. 2-1, strikeout, 17. Nope. Perez will swing for one. That the ball hit the center field. That is a three against a righty. Perez has a single. He will trot down to first on a base hit to center. And now here's Gary Matthews. Matthews is one for two. Has a two-run jack in the game. Infield is half. Perez not really a threat to steal. Nothing happening on the bases anyway. Reislebin will go ahead and pitch to Matthews. Two, three, that's blank. Matthews, four, five, and that's a star one. It's a ground ball to second. One, zero, two. Shortstop for the Padres, Torres is a zero. A one to two, it's a double play. No, Perez will be thrown out at second. Matthews beats the relay, and there is one out. Fielder's choice. Here's Bobby Mercer. Mercer is 0 for 2. Matthews a little bit of a threat to steal. And that is an 18, but not happening there. Freislebin will go ahead and pitch. That's a 2-1. Strikeout 10. No. San Diego Stadium saves Mercer's bacon. Mercer will swing. 1-1. But he flies out to center. And that is the second out. Here's Daryl Evans. Infield now moves back. Evans is 0 for 2. No steal. Nothing happening on the bases. Freislebin will go ahead and pitch. And that's 5-6 against the lefty. That's a blank. Evans gets to swing on this one. A 4-3, but he flies out to center, and that will end the inning. No runs. There was a hit for the Giants. Bottom of the sixth coming up. Here is Dave Winfield leading off for San Diego. He is one for two. He has a single in the game. Montefusco will continue to pitch. Four, two against the righty. Strikeout nine. No. San Diego Stadium saves his bacon. Four, one for Winfield, but that's a star three, and that's just going to be a ground out to second. And that is the first out. Next up is Ted Kubiak. Kubiak is 0 for 1, lined out his first time up. Montefusco with the pitch. 4-1 against a switch hitter left. That's a blank. Kubiak will swing. 5-6 against a righty. That's a base hit right up the middle, right back through the box. And Kubiak will hold at first with a base hit. Gets a nice single. He'll hold there. 
The batter will be Hector Torres. Torres is one for two. Has singled his last time up. Infield goes to half. Anything on the bases? No. Montefusco will go ahead and pitch. Three, two. That's a walk. That one, yep, that will walk Torres easily. Pretty much a one walks anybody unless the stadium or unless he's too low. So that is a walk by Montefusco. That's the second walk he's issued. He had 66 of them in 76. So now the Padres are in business, and here's Fred Kendall. Kendall, one for two, the infield staying halfway. Anything on the bases, a nine is a negative. Montefusco will pitch. And that's a 4-1 against a righty strikeout plus. That 16 will get him. He will strike out Kendall. He will strike him out. And that is the, that's only the first strikeout by Montefusco. Only his first K. And he had 172 of them in uh, 76. That's only his first strikeout in this game. Next batter is Dave Freislebin. What do you want to do here? He is 0 for 2. And he is due to be tired. After the next five batters, he's pitching very well. He's calmed down. He's only scattered four hits in a homer. I'm going to let him swing. I'm going to keep him in there for another inning for the Padres. Yes, I am pleased overall with the rules updates. Had to relearn a few things, but not a problem. I love the I'm really have gotten used to the charts. To anybody that doesn't know, that doesn't play this game of inside pitch, please give it a chance. Please give it a chance. It's the most, in my opinion, the most fun baseball game you can play. I'm not going to knock the other game engines. This game just seems to have the most excitement of any game I've played on the tabletop. The rules, the base running rules can be, will be clunky to you for a little while until you get them. And Chris Davis, the owner of the, the creator of the game, is updating them to be even more fluid and even more easier to understand. He's also updating the rule book with the annotated rules from John Brewer. So pretty much every single rule in the book will have an explanation. That's what you call customer service. And, of course, he also let me help him out with some of the rules. Runners at first and second. Montefusco will pitch to Freisler, but I'm going to keep him in there. Anything on the bases, an 11, no. Montefusco will pitch. 1-4. That's at the park. San Diego Stadium says 6-4, but Fresno Ben's just going to ground it to first, and that will end it. No runs, one hit, and a walk after six. 3-2 to two Padres. So much excitement you can have in this game, people. All right. So much excitement you can have. I mean, last night we had a game where I had nine runs in one inning. That was last night's game. For those of you who didn't check it out, nine runs in one inning. That is the most I've ever had playing any game I played. I, I, checked, I did check my rules on. I did check that, including payoff pitch when I was playing that. And you get some good games. You get pitchers duels. You get blowouts. You get comebacks. If you want to see, if you want to see the crate, if any of you guys here are watching this, if you want to see the craziest game I've ever rolled in inside pitch, I submit to you uh, my 1985 National League Division Series. I believe it was game three between the Cardinals and the Expos. You want to see the craziest game ever? Check that one out. Top of the seventh, three to two Padres. Friesland will stay out there. Chris Spire will bat for the Giants, and he is 0 for 1. He walked his last time up. Frazelbin will pitch. 6-5, range play. Spire will swing, 4-4. Four, four. Fly ball to left field. That is hit to Johnny Grubb. His range is a 3. He won't make it, and that's going to be a double for Spire. Spire cracks a leadoff double. Not really Freiselbin's fault. That's what happens when you get some range plays out there. 
So a tough play by Grubb in left field, and the tying run gets to second base. We So we got a runner on second. Here is Ken Reitz. And yes, Baseball Demos is correct in what he says. Some of the platoon players are not really represented as well as they should be. But, unfortunately, like I said, no game system is perfect. As Dave is 100% correct. But I've learned to live with it. But Dave, however, is right. Definitely, he is right. Spire on its second. Reads the batter now. Let's see if anything on, on, the, on the bases. An eight, no. Phrase Levin will pitch. 2-3, that's a blank. Reitz will go ahead and swing. 4-6, fly out the left. Fly ball to left field. Spire's base running rating is a 3. A minus 3 to left is a 0. Left fielder for, for the Padres is Grubb. And he has a plus 1 arm. So actually on a 1, Spire can get the 3rd. He stays at 2nd. Here's Mark Hill. Hill is 0 for 2. And yes, Dave, you have beat that horse to death, but I, I, I understand what you do say, and you are correct. 100% right. But to me, I really don't think it's really messed. I've seen the generic cards. It, I, do, I don't know. It doesn't bother me. But I understand. But you are. I understand. And I know you are a split expert. That's why you love Stratomatic. And Stratomatic. Is still the best game that represents splits. There's no doubt in my mind on that. That I can't take away from Strat. One out. Hill is the batter. Let's see if anything happening on the bases. A four. No. Freislebin will pitch. One, one. Hit by pitch. Ten. Yeah, he hit him. That's a five. Plus six is an 11. He does hit Hill. Ouch. A hit batter. Puts runners at first and second. Now, now John Montefusco is the next batter up. They will pinch it for him. That will be done. So Montefusco will leave the game. And the Giants will go to the bench. And coming on to pinch it will be Gary Thomason. 259 average, 8 homers, 38 RBIs. Thomason will pinch it against Freislebin. Still one out. Let's see if anything happening on the bases. That is a 12 and nothing happening. Freislebin will pitch. 4-5. Error on a throw. Thomason, 1-6. Ground ball to second base. Ground ball to second. And let's see if we're going to... Ground ball to second. Let's see if we have an error. That ball is hit to second. And that is Fuentes. His error rating is a 9. That's an 8. That's going to be an error on Fuentes. Question is, though, where did it go? Was it a double play chance or did it go to first? This is now we got to find this out. So we know the infield is halfway, and we know we have a throwing error. So let's first find out where it went. Double play chance, automatic, 2-0-3. And shortstop is Torres a zero. A one to three, this would have been a double play. It is a five. Okay, so no. So this means, though, the five, okay, means Spire. It's an error on a throw, though. So that means the throw goes to second. The throw went to second, who's the shortstop, and that is Torres. His range is a three. Does he prevent the ball from getting past him? No, he doesn't. That's going to be a two-base error on the throw. So that is an E4, and it's a two-base throwing error. Which means Spire comes in to score. Hill goes to third, and Thomason is on second as he threw the ball away into left field. That's where it wound up, and it's now 3-3, three to three, and we got a huge error there. Stadium groans. Ugh. First error on the Padres. 
They did commit an error historically in the game. So runners at second and third, that would not have been a double play anyway, but the throw goes to second. If it was a six, the throw would have went to first. So throws to second, Thomason on at second, Hill goes to third, and now here's Herndon. So that error definitely hurts. Now the Padres have action going on in the bullpen, and this will probably be Freisleben's last batter. Now the infield is in. A huge error on the Padres. Herndon is 0 for 2. Let's see if anything happening on the bases. That's a 16. No. Actually, the infield's going to play halfway because Mark Hill's base running rating becomes a 0. Either they don't have to play in. Hill won't be able to go on a grounder. Freislebin, 5-3 against the righty. That's an automatic out. Star six, and that's a fly out to center. Fly ball to center field. Her Herndon's sacrifice fly rating is a zero, so nothing happening there. Hill's base running rating is a one. The fly ball to center. Herndon, I'm sorry, center fielder Davis has a plus one arm, so it's a two. A one to two, Hill will score. Three to five, he holds. Six, there could be an out. That is a three. He holds a third. He will not score. And there are two outs. So we cannot bring in the sacrifice. The batter now is Marty Perez. And that is going to be it for Freislebin as he is now tired. He will come out. So let's see what the Padres want to do. They want to bring in here against Perez. Think they will probably bring in. He hits lefties a little worse, a little more power. But I'm going to bring in a lefty, I believe, on Perez. And he may only be in there for one inning. Oh, well, actually, you would bring in a righty, though. Let's see. Who do I got? Coming on to pitch for the Padres is going to be Alan Foster. Three wins, six losses, a 3-2-2 ERA. His job is simple. Just get out Marty Perez. Alan Foster against Perez. Top of the seventh, 3-3 three, three tie, two outs. A huge error allows a big run to come in. Let's see if anything happening on the bases. That's an 18. No. Foster will pitch. 4-4. Four, four. Against the righty, that's blank. Perez will swing. 4-3. Star 6. He flies out the left. And that will end the inning. One run on one hit. A hit batter and a ginormous error. We are at the 7th inning stretch. Sing your take me out to the ball game. I will be right back. Always like to remind you, don't forget, we have the 10-minute ticker coming up after the game. Tomorrow night will be June 23rd, and we will be at uh, Memorial Stadium. We got a good game tomorrow night. It will be the Boston Red Sox taking on the Baltimore Orioles. Rick Jones will take on Jim Palmer tomorrow night. 
as I think that's my first look at Palmer. I'm not 100% sure. I have to check. But we got a good one tomorrow night. So for all you Red Sox fans out there, and for all, and of course, let all the Red Sox fans know, like Salvador America and now Red Sox fans, the Sox are on the board. Boston at Baltimore. That will be tomorrow night's inside pitch game. Should have some McNuggets when watching a 1970s Padre game over Ray Kroc. That is, this is true. This is true. We go to the bottom of the seventh. The Padres have the top of the order leading off. Here is Johnny Grubb. Grubb is 0 for 2. The Giants need a pitcher. They got left switch left. So I think the Giants will bring out a lefty here. See who they want to go out with. And they will go with, it's a tie game. And I guess I got to go with him. Coming on to pitch for the Giants will be Gary Lavelle. 10 wins, 6 losses, 12 saves. A 2.69 ERA, pretty much their closer. But Gary Lavelle is going to get the call here to fight off the Padres here in the bottom of the seven. Tied at three. Lavelle can pitch to seven batters without a problem. Johnny Grubb leads off for the Padres. Lavelle with the pitch. Three, five. That's a walk. That nine will walk him. And Lavelle comes in and walks Grubb. So automatically walks the leadoff batter. A chance now for Fuentes. Fuentes is one for three. Infield is halfway. Anything on the bases in 18? No. Although Fuentes does have a good bunt rating here. I wonder if I bunt with Fuentes. He's got a 263 average, though. The way this game is going, a bunt could be huge. His double play rating's a two, but Lavelle is a minus one double play. I'm going to let Fuentes hit. Lavelle will pitch. Four, six. Against a switch and a right, that's a blank. Fuentes will swing. Six, six. He flies out the left. That's the first out, and that next batter will be Willie Davis. Davis is one for three. Nothing happening on the bases. Lavelle will pitch to Davis. That's a 2-2. Wild pitch? Not this time. That's a five. Ball one. We'll do it again. Lavelle. 4-2. Walk plus 10. Yep, that seven definitely will do it. And Lavelle has walked two batters. Another walk. By Gary Lavelle, runners at first and second now. And here's Willie McCovey as Baseball Demos is giving me a cheap plug. No plug of yours is ever cheap there, Dave. Just call it, don't call it cheap, call it an economical plug. A, an, a nice economical plug. As he says, the NBC style game of the week in 1982 Strat. Ooh, the Padres and the Dodgers and Fernando Mania. Ooh, definitely got to watch that. Runners at first and second here, one out. And we are running with C. Lavelle in a little bit of a jam. McCovey is one for three. Lavelle's walked two batters. That's a three. Nothing happening on the bases. Lavelle will go ahead and pitch. 4-3, and against the lefty, that's a home run chance. McCovey against the lefty's a 19. That is a 10, and that is a kaboom. That ball is high. That ball is deep. That ball is over the right field fence. It is gone. Home run, Willie McCovey. Gary Lavelle comes in here. Tries to keep it close, and he allows a three-run blast to Willie McCovey. Stadium cheers. EA! Second homer of the game for, in the, in the game here. As Willie McCovey goes ahead and gets a hold of one there. And that is a three-run jack. 
And it is now six to three Padres. The batter now is Dave Winfield. Winfield is one for three. And Gary Lavelle, uh, yeah, that's his pull rating already there. That's four on his pull rating. They're going to keep him out there, though, see if he can finish the inning out, but don't know if he will. Lavelle will go ahead and pitch to Winfield. One out, and that's a 6-5. And against a righty, that's a blank. Winfield will swing 5-1. That's a base hit, pass short. That's a single. So Lavelle comes into the game as pretty much ineffect ineffective. Here's Ted Kubiak. And that's going to be it for Lavelle, as the Giants have no choice. They got to yank him out. They got to yank him out. So now switch right, right. Think they'll bring in a right-hander now to pitch. See who the Giants want to bring in. And they'll go, well, now they'll go up with him. Here's Charlie Williams. Two wins, no losses, a save. A 2.96 ERA. Charlie Williams will be the third Giants pitcher. 6-3, one out. I understand, Dave, but there's always a first time for everything. Winfield on it first. Williams, let's see. Am I rolling a strat? Yes, I am. Still rolling strat roll. That's a 20. Williams does have a pickoff chance. Throws to first. No, Winfield gets back. Williams will pitch. 1-1, one, one. that's a blank. Kubiak swings, 3-5. Ground ball to first. Do they have a double play? 2-0. The infield automatically halfway. 3. Shortstop, Spire. Minus 1 is a 2. A 4, no. Uh, Winfield has base running rating as a 4, but when the infield halfway, his base running rating is lowered by 1. So he is still thrown out at second, but Kubiak makes first, and there are two outs. Fielder's choice. And now here's Hector Torres. Torres is one for two, has a single and a walk. Checking on the strat. That is an 18, nothing happening. Williams will pitch. 6-2, that's a blank, not tired. Torres swings, 4-1. That's a base hit to right field. That's a single. Kubiak's base running rating of two. With two outs is a three. Single to right, plus two is a five. Right fielder for the Giants is Mercer. It's a zero. One to five, he gets the third. And he does. Torres will go to first on a base hit. And now here's Fred Kendall. Kendall is one for three. Runners at the corners. Charlie Williams trying to keep it there as best as he can. The infield is back. Anything on the bases. A 20. Williams throws to first. And yes, he got him. Williams picks him off. He goes ahead on a 20, and a 3-4 is a 3. That's a 3. He picks off Hector Torres, and that's a huge out because that ends the inning. Side retire. Three runs on three hits, a home run by McCovey, and a couple of walks after seven. It is six to 6-3 Padres, and we have reached the historical score of the game. So 6-3 to three was the score of the game, historically, and we are at 6-3. to three. I call that realistic so far, but the game's not over yet. Top of the eighth. Alan Foster due to pitch for the Padres. Leading off for the Giants in the eighth inning is Gary Matthews. They have right, left, left. Foster's going to pitch to Matthews. He'll pitch to him, though. So top of the eight, six to three Friars. 
Foster with the pitch. 1-5 against a righty. That's blank. Matthews will swing. 2-1. That's a base hit past second base. And Matthews gets a single. Matthews goes to first. And the batter is Bobby Mercer. That's going to be it for Foster as the Padres are going to go to the bullpen and bring out a lefty. And they're going to go with Brent Strom. Well, maybe not Strom. Hold on. Maybe not Strom. Strom's only pitched the three of them. Usually I got to bring in somebody that's pitched more. I don't want to bring him in. I'll bring him in. Coming on to pitch will be Dave Tomlin. And I think we're going to see Dave Tomlin, no wins or loss, a 284 ERA. May see a double switch. Let me see here. Kendall, Kendall, due to bat, is eighth. And that's Kendall. Fresno Ben's already gone. So. Do I want to do a double switch here because Tomlin would only pitch to because he's due to bat second in the ninth inning. You know what? No. I will let him pitch to Mercer. No double switch. Runners, runner at first. Infield is halfway. Six to three. There is no strat. Tomlin will pitch. Two five. Error on a throw. Mercer. Six five. That's a pop-out to first base. And, of course, there's not an error there on a pop-fly ball to first, and that's out number one. Next up is Daryl Evans. Evans is 0 for 3. Just don't bring in Rick Folkers unless you run out of pitchers. Matthews on at first. Tomlin will pitch. 5-5 five, five against the lefty. That's a home run chance. Evans against the lefty is a 14. That is a 6. And that is a kaboom. That ball is gone. Home run, Daryl Evans. A straight home run chance off of Tomlin against the lefty. And that is a 14 and a 6. And Evans just blasts a two-run homer of his own. Well, there goes the historical score. But we got a game, a two-run jack by Daryl Evans. As he hits it off of Tomlin. And it is now 6-5. to five. And now here's Chris Spire. Spire is two is one for two is one for one for two. He doubled his last time up. They're going to let Tomlin stay out there. Or will he? Yeah, they'll let him stay out there. 6 to 5 now. Tomlin will go ahead and pick. And that's 6-3, strikeout, 15, no. Spire will swing, 1-4, he flies out to right. And that is out number two. Two men down, and here is Ken Reitz. Reitz is one for three. Tomlin, Tomlin will pitch to him. The Padre bat, is due to bat second. The Padres really don't want to burn a pitcher. They want to save their closer for the ninth inning. Tomlin will pitch. They're going to rely on Tomlin. 4-3. Walk. 11. No. Reitz will swing. 6-5. Ground out to short. And he does the job. He does give up a homer, but he gets it done. Two runs on two hits. And it is now 6-5 to five going into the bottom of the eighth. So we still got a ball game here. Leading off for the Padres will be Fred Kendall. Kendall will bat one for three. Charlie Williams still on the mound. And he will stay out there. He can pitch to about three batters before tiring. Kendall will bat. 
Bottom of the eighth. Padres looking for insurance. 2-2. Two -two. Range play. Kendall swings. 6-5. Pop out to the shortstop. And that is Spire. His range is a 2. That's going to drop in for a base hit. It's a 3. And that's a single. Just a little bit out of his reach. And it falls in between him and the center fielder coming in to make a quick play. And that will drop in for a hit. We'll see a new batter for Dave Tomlin as the Padres will go to the bench. And it will be Doug Rader coming up to pinch it. Rader, 257 average, nine homers, 55 RBIs. Kendall on at first. Infield is going to be halfway. Williams, we'll see if anything happening on the bases. Strat is on again. 19. No. No, although Raider could bunt, but I'm not going to bunt with Raider. He can hit the ball. Williams will bat, will pitch. 3-6. Strikeout. 11. Yes. Gets Raider on a K. Struck him out. That's a big strikeout. Out number one. And now here's Johnny Grubb. Grubb is 0 for 2, but he's walked twice. Williams with the pitch. I'm actually, I'm sorry, we've got to roll the strat first. 11, nothing happening. Williams, 5 4. That's a blank. Grubb will swing. 3 5. Base hit to right field. That's a single for Grubb. Base running rating is a 1. Uh, let's see, single to right. Single to right, plus two is a three. Mercer is a zero. A one to three, Kendall will make third. No, he will hold it second. But a base hit for Grubb, and that's his first hit of the game. And now Tito Fuentes. Fuentes is one for four. And that's going to be it for Williams as he is tired. So San Francisco will go to the bullpen. And coming on to pitch for the Giants will be Randy Moffitt. And he was their closer. Six wins, six losses, 14 saves, a 2-2-7 ERA. Randy Moffitt, his job is very simple. Keep it a 6-5 game. Runners at first and second. Padres are threatening. Moffitt will pitch to Fuentes. I'll check to see if anything on the bases. And 11 is a no. Moffitt will pitch. 5-5. Five, five. That's a range play. Fuentes, 3-2. That's a single to second base, but it is a range play. And that is hit to Perez. His range is a 2. But the infield is halfway, so that is a 1. He only has a 1 to make... He only has a one to make this, and I'll tell you, he has to. No, that's going to be a base hit past second. That's a single for Fuentes. Kendall's base running rating is a one, and he will not score from second, though. He has to hold at third. Probably wondering why I didn't do a pinch runner, because he's still the best catcher the Padres have. And the bases are loaded. And the batter will be Willie Davis. Davis is one for three, a single and a walk. Bases are loaded. The Padres are going to keep the infield halfway, which pretty much, if they throw home, Kendall's an automatic dead duck. On a grounder. Bases loaded. Bottom of the eight, six, five Padres. I will roll for a strat. That's a 16. Nothing happening there. Moffitt will pitch. That's a 1 1. Again, a range play. Oh boy, that's not what you want. Davis will swing. 5-3. It's again a ground ball to second base. Again, it goes to Perez. His range is a 2, but because the infield is halfway, it's a 1. 
He absolutely has to make this. No base hit past second. That's a single. Kendall will come in to score. Grubbs base running rating of two. He will come in to score from second. Fuentes from th a three. He will make it to third. Davis goes to first. Two run RBI, two RBI single by Davis. Eight to five Padres. Stadium cheers. EA. Willie Davis comes through with a big RBI single as as Marty Perez had no, really no, almost no chance to make the play at second base. Now eight to five Padres and still one out here in the bottom of the eighth. In the bottom of the eighth last night, we had nine runs. I don't think the Padres will do that, but you never know. Here's Willie McCovey. McCovey had a homer his last time up. He's two for four. Still one out. The infield is halfway. There is no more strat. Moffitt is going to pitch to McCovey. Are they going to call? No, actually, they're going to call the infield in. They cannot allow Fuentes to get a run. Moffitt will pitch. Five, six. Possible error. McCovey, three, five. That's a single. That's a that's a single to second base. Now, that's a possible error. It is not an error. That is what you call an infield single. McCovey's base running rating is a one. It's a slow rolling grounder to second to Perez. The only way McCovey makes it to first is on a one. No. He is out, but the runners do advance automatically. So Fuentes does come in to score. Davis goes to second. That's two outs. And it is now 9-5, to five, Dolly Parton, for the Padres. The new rule on that is it's not an error, an error question mark, or an error on a grounder. On an on an S one to on an S one to S six, that is no longer an error. It's an it's a possible infield single. Runners advance automatically, so there's no change in the runners no matter what. Nine to five Padres, two outs now, and here is Dave Winfield. Now the infield is back. Moffitt will pitch. Six two blank. He's not tired. Winfield will swing, 5-6, fly out the left, and that will end the inning. So, three runs, three runs on four hits for the Padres. After eight, 9-5, to five, Dolly Parton. Will we see some ninth inning magic? We go to the top of the ninth inning. Steeler fan, all he cares about is the ticker. It's all he cares about. Doesn't care about anything else, unless it's his Astros. Padres got to go to the bullpen. It's a four-run lead. They got Mark Hill, probably see a pinch hitter for him. See who the Padres want to bring out. They're going to bring out Metzger. They're not going to be dumb. Here comes Butch Metzger. He's the closer. And try to get this game over with. 11 wins, 4 losses, 16 saves, a 2.92 ERA. We're going to see a pinch hitter for Mark Hill as Hill's coming out of the game. And Mike Ivey will come in to pinch hit. And he'll also take over and and he'll also take over at catcher. I'm sorry, not Ivy, I'm sorry. The Giants are up. The Giants are up. Ugh. Wrong. How about let's see who I want to bring in. We'll bring in Dave Raider. <clears throat> the other Raider comes in. Dave Raider will pinch it. He will take over at catcher. 
So here's Dave Rader, 263 average, a homer, 22 RBIs. He will pinch hit against Metzger. Top of the night, 9 to 5. Will we see some magic? Metzger will pitch. 2-2, two, two, strikeout, 9, no. Raider will swing, 4-4, four, four, grounder to third. And that's out number one. We'll see a pinch hitter now for Randy Moffitt, as he has done. And coming on to pinch hit for him will be Daryl Thomas. 232 average, two homers, 19 RBIs. Metzger ready to deal. Pitch to Thomas. 1-2, strikeout, 16, no. Thomas will swing. 2-3, base hit to right field. Single for Daryl Thomas, a pinch hit single. And he will trot down to first. What? Did you expect a 1-2-3 closing inning at RJL? 5-1-8? I think not. Giants are still alive. Here is Larry Herndon. He will bat. Herndon is 0 for 3. Infield is halfway. They're going to try to play for 2. No strat. Metzger will pitch. 4-4. Four, four. That's a blank. He's not tired. Herndon will swing. 6-5. Pop out to second base. That's out number 2. Out number two, and now the last chance is Marty Perez, who got beaten up at second base in the last inning, missing a couple of range plays. Two outs, Thomas on it first. Metzger ready to deal to Perez. Perez is one for four. Metzger with the pitch. One five, that's a walk. That 15, no. Perez will swing. 3-6. Fly ball center field. Fly ball to center field. Getting under it is Davis. Puts out his glove. Blah. And the ball falls into it. That's your game. Padres go ahead and beat the Giants tonight. 9-5. to Dolly Parton. No runs and a hit for the G-Men. As the Padres do win this game, and they won it historically, as that is done by the Padres. Not a bad game. A pretty good baseball game tonight. Don't go away. Final line score and 10-minute ticker coming right up. For the Padres, nine runs on 14 hits and one error. For the Giants, five runs on eight hits and no errors. Dave Frazelbin will go ahead and get the win. John Montefusco takes the loss. There is no save. It is now time for the 10-minute ticker brought to you by Fast Score Baseball of Replay Sports. To purchase the to purchase fast score, it is in my comments. So the Padres do get a win. Nine to five. So 
So let's see what happens. Boston taking on Baltimore. Boston taking on Baltimore. We'll start with the Red Sox. Red Sox have an eight. And that is a 61. And that is a good roll. That's six. Baltimore has a seven. 33. And that is three runs. The Red Sox will win that game. Minnesota taking on California. Twins have a six. Sorry, Twins have a 12. 13, and that is one. California has a six. 61, and that's going to give them a win. 5-1 for the Angels. White Sox taking on Kansas City. The White Sox with a nine. 11, and that is zero. Kansas City has a 14. 26, and that is four. The Royals will win there. Detroit taking on Milwaukee. Detroit has a 9, 54, and that is five runs. The Brewers have a 10, 63, that's seven runs. The Brew Crew will beat the Tigers. Cleveland taking on the Yankees. The Indians have a 6, a 15, that's only one run. Yankees have an 11, 34, that's going to give them the win. That's four runs. Yankees win again. Texas taking on Oakland. The Rangers with an 11. 42. Four runs. The Athletics, who have now taken over first place in the American League West, they have a 7. 56, and that is five runs. The A's win a game there. Oakland has taken over first place in the AL West from the Twins. Houston against Atlanta. Houston with a 13. A 23, and that is three runs. Atlanta has a 9. 36, and that is four runs. The Braves will beat the Astros. And, of course, Steeler fan will say rigged. Dodgers taking on the Reds. Dodgers of a 5. A 25, that's two. The Reds have an 11. 51, and that is five, and this one belongs to the Reds. Montreal taking on the Phillies. The Expos have a three, a 23, and that is only one run. Philadelphia, they got a 20, and a 25 is good enough for them. That's four, and the Phillies continue to win in the National League East. Mets taking on the Cardinals. My Mets have not. Been getting good rolls in the ticker lately. I got Kuzman on the mound. It's got a 10. A 41. That's not bad. That's four runs. The Cardinals have a four. A 56. And that is five runs. And the Cardinals will beat the Mets again. No happy recap. Moving on to Jen, moving on to the 22nd. Boston taking on Baltimore. We have this game tomorrow night. Salvador America, your Red Sox are on the board. Boston with a 13. A 54. And that is six runs. Baltimore has an 11. 33. That's going to be a win for the Red Sox. That's three runs. Boston wins. Minnesota taking on California. The Twins have an 18. A 32, and that is five runs. California has an 11, 53, and that is six runs. The Angels will beat the Twins. White Sox and the Royals. The White Sox have a 10, 35, and that is four runs. Kansas City has a 26, a 24. And that's five and that's five runs. The uh, Royals will beat the White Sox. Detroit taking on Milwaukee. Detroit has an eight. 23. And that's two runs. Milwaukee has a 10. 56. That's six runs. The Brewers will win. Cleveland taking on the Yankees. Cleveland has an eight. 44. And that's four runs. The Yankees have a 13, 35, and that is four runs. We got extras. We got a clutch check, so let's see what we got here. Uh, Cleveland's clutch is a one, so one plus three is four. 
The Yankees have a minus one. Six minus one is five. The Yankees will still win the game, and they will take a 5-4 win over the Indians. Texas taking on Oakland. Texas has a 10. A 21, that is two. Oakland has an 11. 15, that's two. We got extras here as well. Texas has a zero clutch. That's a one. Oakland has a minus one clutch. Three minus one is two. Oakland will win that game three to two over the Rangers. Houston taking on Atlanta. It goes up to 30, is as high as they go. 30 is the highest they can go. And I have not seen it there yet, but it does happen. Houston taking on Atlanta. Astros have a 13, a 42, and that's five runs for the Astros. Atlanta has a 16, 11. Nope, that's the zero. Astros will beat the Braves. Pittsburgh taking on the Cubs. Pittsburgh with a 16, 42. And let's see, 42, that's five runs. Cubs with a 10. 25, three runs. The Pirates will win. Dodgers and the Reds. Dodgers have a 7. 15, ugh, that's one run. Reds will probably win that one. They got a 13. The Big Red Machine, a 66. It's as high as you can go. And that is 10. And the Big Red Machine, and this one belongs to the Reds. Montreal taking on Philadelphia. The Expos have a three. 52. And that's three runs. Philly has a 23. A 36. And that is six runs. And the Phillies continue to run away with the National League East. San Francisco taking on San Diego. Giants have a four. An 11, and that is a zero. Padres have a 13, 44. That'll give them a win, 5 nothing win over the Giants. Another win for the Padres. Mets taking on the Cardinals. I got Swan on the mound, and it's a 6. A 25, that's only two runs. The Cardinals have a 9. 56, and that's six runs. And my Mets are on a big, are on a losing streak. And that is, a, and no happy recap for me tonight. That is your 10 minute ticker. If your team won tonight, congratulations. If they didn't, there's always tomorrow. Tomorrow night, we will be at Memorial Stadium as the Boston Red Sox will take on the Baltimore Orioles. Rick Jones goes for the Red Sox, and Jim Palmer on the mound for the O's. And that should be an exciting matchup tomorrow. Red Sox and Orioles tomorrow night on Inside Pitch. Steeler fan, Brandon Baker, Salvador America, Dave Little, Baseball Demos, Jeff Merklin. Thank you, Philip Reynolds. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Please leave a like on your way out to the turnstiles. Subscribe if you've not done so. And please make sure you hit that bell so you know that I am online, you know when I get online. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart, stay strong, and we will see you guys later. It is the Padres over the Giants tonight, 9 to 5. Have a good night tonight, guys. We'll see you later.